Chapter Twenty Four of the Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Brea. Chapter Twenty Four Manners. Miss Sedgwick, in her Means and Ends, has treated the subject of manners in a happier way than any other writer with whom I am acquainted. Perhaps her views are already familiar to most of my readers, but lest they should not be so and on account of the excellency i propose to give a brief abstract of some of them she complains in the first place that manners are too often considered as certain forms to be taught or certain modes of conduct for which the rules are to be made and observe that some of the greek states maintained professors to teach manners in connection with which she immediately adds the following paragraph Quote, is this making manners a distinct branch of education consistent with her nature? Are they not the sign of inward qualities, a fitting expression of the social virtues? Are they not a mirror which often does and always should reflect the soul? For instance, is not a person of mild temper gentle in manners? Has not another a bold and independent disposition, a forward and fearless manner? It has been well said the real elegance of demeanour springs from the mind. Fashionable schools do but teach its imitation. Here she quotes with apparent approbation the views of Mr. Locke. This writer, in speaking of the moral education, has the following paragraph. Quote, if his tender mind be filled with veneration for his parents and teachers, which consist in love and esteem, and a fear to offend them, and with respect and good will to all people, that respect will of itself teach those ways which he observes to be most acceptable. End quote. Miss Sedgwick also makes the following judicious remarks quote, I pray you to bear in mind that manners are but manifestations of character. I must premise that by Manners, I do not mean the polished manners of the most highly educated and refined of other countries, nor the deferential subservience of their debased classes, so pleasing to those who prefer the homage to the friendship of their fellow creatures. Manners, in every one's character and conduct, should be based on religion. Honour all men, says the Apostle. This is the spring of good manners. It strikes at the very root of selfishness. It is a principle by which we render to all ages and ranks their due a respect for your fellow beings a reverence for them as god's creatures and our brethren will inspire that delicate regard to their rights and feelings of which good manners is the sign if you have truth not the truth of policy but religious truth your manners will be sincere they will have earnestness simplicity and frankness the best qualities of manners they will be free from assumption, pretense, affectation, flattery, and obsequiousness, all of which are incompatible with sincerity. If you have a goodly sincerity, you will choose to appear no other nor better than you are, to dwell in a true light. End quote. I have often insisted that the Bible contains the only rules necessary in the study of politeness, or in other words, that those who are the real disciples of Christ cannot fail to be truly polite. Nor have I any reason for recalling this opinion from which that of Miss Sedgwick does not materially differ. Not that the same forms will be observed by every follower of Christ in manifesting his politeness. All I insist on is that every one will be truly polite. Let me illustrate my views in a very plain manner. Suppose a wandering female clad in the meanest of hell calls at a house to inquire the way to the next inn having just found the road to divide or fork in a very doubtful and difficult manner suppose there are no persons in the house but half a dozen females these we will also suppose are persons of real piety and true benevolence what does true politeness require of them but to give the stranger in a gentle and affectionate manner the necessary information but if every one is ready to perform the office which true politeness would dictate, it is consequently truly polite 
there will probably be as many ways of manifesting these feelings as there are individuals present in the company one for example will give the stranger the best direction she can without leaving the room but will be in all respects exceedingly particular another will go to the door and there give the same directions a third will go with her into the street and there instruct her a fourth will go with her to the first or second fork of the road and there give further directions a fifth will send a boy with her a sixth will sketch the road plainly though coarsely with a pencil and mark in a proper manner the course she ought to pursue each one will instruct her in an intelligent manner so there can hardly remain the possibility of a mistake but we see that there will be a considerable difference in the form it may be said in reply to this view of politeness that there are genuine disciples of christ who from ignorance of what they ought to do or from bad habits not yet subdued will not in such a case as i have described render any assistance at all and that they cannot of course be truly polite to which i have only to reply that such a thing can hardly happen and if it should the spirit of christianity would not lead to it but it would be the result rather of a want of that spirit in short let the young woman who would be truly polite take her lessons not in the school of a hollow heartless world but in the school of jesus christ i know this counsel may be despised by the gay and fashionable but it will be much easier to despise it than to prove it to be incorrect always think of the good of the whole rather than of your own individual convenience says miss farrer and her young lady's friend a most excellent rule and one to which i solicit your earnest attention she who is thoroughly imbued with the gospel spirit will not fail to do so it was what our saviour did continually and i have no doubt that his was the purest specimen of good manners or genuine politeness that the world has ever witnessed the politeness of abraham himself not excepted chapter twenty four